All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I am delighted to be joined all the way from Cyprus, our first people from Cyprus, Noemi Beres and Gabor Kazai. How are you doing, guys? We are very well. Thank you. Thank you for having us, John. Yes. Yeah, and, nice, nice to meet you. Uh, <laughs> and they are the owners of Podcast Connections, a boutique podcast agency. Um, and uh, in full disclosure, uh, they have uh, forwarded a lot of guests to this podcast. <laughs> so we find very, very high quality, great quality guests. So it's nice to actually have the people behind the guests for once. And we're going to talk, we're going to talk podcasting today. Um, and how you can be more creative with your podcast and, and even like why you should consider going on other people's podcasts. So um, let me, the first question is a lot of people, I, I get contacted by a lot of people like they, maybe they start their own podcast and then, you know, they think it's going to be a lot easier. They start their own podcast and then, you know, they do like 10, 20 episodes and then they kind of fade away because, you uh, it does a little bit more to it than just sort of saying, oh, I'm going to have a podcast if you want to have something that actually has some longevity. So what is your advice to people at the beginning? Is it start your own podcast or is it go on other people's podcasts first? Which would be a better move, do you think, for most people? That, that's a hard question, to be honest, because although we do podcast guesting, but we don't have a podcast yet and we are not mm -hmm. planning. I don't think we're going to have one. <laughs> we know we know a lot of hard work to have a podcast and um, it, it's it's not an easy job to do so i think our advice we talked about this before with gabor yes. that i think the best things to start with to do podcast guesting is just easier it's uh, less time consuming money consuming and once you are into that habit you can start your own podcast why not but i think yeah. just to get some experience Experience, it's a good way to, to start guesting. It's it's just easy. Just yeah. get on podcast. Yeah, and then you can you can see a little bit behind the scene. So what's what's happening? Uh, uh, you know, in during an interview, what what's involved, what kind of workload include uh, having just being a guest, but as you know, you, you're being a host, so that's like kind yeah. of a different different angle. Yeah, absolutely. And then just so so if somebody is thinking about, you know, OK, maybe I should start trying to be a guest on on podcasts. What's some of the advice that you give them? Number one, why should they do it and how and and how should they prepare themselves for it? I mean, first of all, uh, they need to get ready like, mentally and and just to prepare uh, a good bio or a good one pager, a one sheet that you need to start with uh, to include all your, you know, the most important things that the host should know about you. It shouldn't be that long. It shouldn't be like a, in a novel or something like that. It should be short and sweet and include all the information that a host needs to know about you. Plus, you need to have uh, good topics, talking points ready for the host or even questions that you would like to be asked. Uh, especially at the beginning when you are not so comfortable with guesting, it's easier to provide them with a couple of questions. That's also a good idea. And obviously you include your website, your social links, because you want to get your name out there. And that's a good start. I mean, the first thing is bio, one pager, a good headshot. It's also important. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, it gives you a good uh, clarity. So what kind of uh, topics you would like to talk about? And that's going to be a big help when you try to find podcasts you would like to be a guest on. So that's, yeah. that's, that's a preparation. I think that's, that's yeah, I, I, I would agree. Um, just from my own point of view is I think, I think sometimes people go too broad and yeah. when, when you're having people as guests, if you can actually uh, focus in on an area and, and even, even narrow it down, you know, to something that's a little bit more interesting or unique or something that you can really talk about. Those are the people who, who are interesting. I think some people, sometimes they think, Oh, I'll be a guest. Well, I can talk about this, 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 and this, and you go, well, let's focus in on one. Yeah, yeah, that's so true, John. I mean, you have to find your niche. You have to find your niche topics and talking points, but you also have to find your niche podcast where your listeners, where your audience is. It's, it's very important. Yeah. 
Yeah. And and on that point about finding the right podcast, I mean, because as I said earlier, I mean, it's like everybody has a podcast today. So you could uh, you could easily uh, spend your time ending up on podcasts that that uh, aren't the right ones for you or just grabbing any podcast. So how do you start off kind of by deciding which is the right podcast for you? Uh, basically, if you know your audience, that's that's really hard. So uh, it, the the searches start with your audience in your mind. So where are those people hang out? So what kind of uh, topics or what kind of podcasts they might uh, they might listen? Um, or maybe what your comp competition doing? So it's like if you know you, you have a competition, uh, does this person? do podcast guesting and you can look at it uh, what what type of post podcast mm -hmm. uh, they do and then that can give you a good idea um, about your target podcast uh, and then find more yeah, yeah. and uh, and um, the other part too is I mean obviously it's finding the the podcast is one thing it's then obviously getting on the podcast I mean something with you you guys obviously do on behalf of people but for those listening, what is the right way to approach a podcaster, approach a podcaster or, or, you know, in order to get on their show? Like, is there a, is there a, a good way of a, an elegant way of doing this? Yeah, absolutely. You have to you always have to personalize and uh, your emails and try to be like nice with your approach because yeah they are people the hosts are people too and just let them know. you listen to a couple of episodes and you tell them that you know what's your opinion about the episodes obviously they're good and they're great because you want you want to be on that podcast mm -hmm. just to tell them your opinion about those episodes and why you like them because that's a good thing it's a good feedback and hosts love to get feedback about mm -hmm. their episodes and yeah and just start the conversation with that it's just so important just be human and just communicate with them. It's it's not a magic formula to get in touch with them. Just, you know, we are all human. Just We just have to talk and start the conversation. Yeah, and then obviously when you listen to those episodes, you, you're going to have a better idea. Yeah. Uh, what's this podcast about? What what kind of topic they they cover? Um, what kind of guests they, they uh, have on the show? Um, yeah, that's that's helps a lot. So just to approach uh, those kind of shows. Yeah, just learn, learn more learn more about the host and learn more, more about um, the audience they have. Maybe they have a Facebook group um, and, and different what kind of posts they have. So that's that's helps a lot. Yeah, yeah. Because one of the, the it's a very good point. Because one of the things that sometimes I find like it doesn't happen that often, but you know the odd time I do have guests who you know haven't looked at any previous videos, don't really. You know, somebody got them onto the podcast, don't really know about it, you know, aren't really that prepared. Like I said, thankfully, with I don't get that very often, but, you know, I did get it at the beginning a little bit more. So I think one of the key things, as you say, is if you're going to be a podcast guest is actually listen to the podcast or watch the podcast, you know, a little bit of cross section, learn a little bit about it. So because otherwise, if you're going on five minutes before the podcast and then saying, uh, <laughs> Is this audio and video or and, and what is what who what kind of things do you do you know that that's very frustrating as a host <laughs> yeah obviously that that's not good that's not a good sign uh mm -hmm. and the other thing that you can do is the get in touch with the host on linkedin i think linkedin mm -hmm. is a great great platform to get in touch with hosts um, with clients with anyone it's a professional network so why not to use it for you know for the right cause and i always do that with hosts and you know they are happy to to connect so yeah mm -hmm. that's how you can ex even expand your network your professional network with, with podcasting and, and i guess that's that's my other question is um prep preparation so uh how should how should people prep prepare to be a guest i mean we said okay um you know look at previous podcasts like understand the podcast that you're going to be on but what are some things that you can do to stand out as a guest so that other people want you on their podcasts uh, I, I think it's uh, one of the important thing. It's it's not about you as a guest. It's about the, their audience. So what they want to uh, know, because most of the people listen to podcasts to learn something. So there must be a takeaway. So it's not. So whatever your topic uh, is, usually it's not about your business. It's about mm -hmm. how can you 
have the audience. So you you teach uh, teach them something, or you can tell your experience. It depends on the podcast, obviously. Um, maybe you can do a case study. So again, it depends on the podcast. But uh, you can prepare with something with something you can have with the audience, so they can they can learn from you. It's not. <laughs> It's not a sales pitch, obviously. No, so it's not. No, and so you're important. sharing knowledge, and that's. I yes. think that's the most important about podcasting: the sharing knowledge, and you you teach people about something, and they learn something from you, and that's how it works. So it's yeah, it's 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 awesome. Yeah, and the other mm-hmm. thing uh, we usually advise and a little bit on a technical part. Uh, so when you do guesting, so uh, it's just find a place. It's kind of quiet like this office, <laughs> um, yeah, prepare with like headphones, headphones yes, um, microphone, microphone if you can, but uh, mm-hmm. someone, someone said it's like uh, the airports is really good. Um, yeah, but some quiet, uh, you have a microphone, um, not on your phone, not on the airport, but some quiet place and you can talk and you can, you can hear the host. Yeah, not in a restaurant or a cafe or anything mm-hmm. like that. So you just try to, yeah. yeah because, because these days, uh, People leaving podcasts just like listen to it and the quality is bad. Mm. They're gonna leave. Yeah, so we don't like we don't like it either because sometimes yeah. when you listen, we listen to a lot of podcasts, obviously because of right. That. And it's like when you listen to something and it's just not right and the quality is bad. It's like no, I don't, I don't want to listen to that. Yeah, I don't so want to send my client to that because they're just not up to the right quality. Yeah, yeah. and uh, you can see it's like uh, you go on YouTube. They have a 4K camera. So the mm. quality is everything now. It's like it's important mm. for for the listeners or the viewers for both. Yeah, yeah. No, I I would I would agree I would agree totally with that. Um, I I definitely think that yeah they they should you know find the right place have the right equipment all of that. Um, I think that's critically important. You'd be surprised uh, you know that there's how many people don't do that sometimes um and it definitely makes a big difference so i think if you are as you said if you are going to be a podcast guest you know, make sure you have the infrastructure to uh, to do it well and nowadays i mean it, it's to be honest it's super cheap to be able to even if you want to set up a micro you know a decent microphone or get a decent camera you know an hd camera and all of that it's very cheap to do but it makes a massive difference if you put a little thought into your setup before you go out as a guest yeah, exactly. I think in a hundred hundred dollars you can get everything, and it's a good quality to start. Yeah, that's, yeah. I, that's not a big I, investment. Yeah, but I think it's an investment that makes a massive difference because yeah. when you look like you're prepared, when you look like you are, um, you know, you've put some preparation into it. It just makes it just makes a big big difference. And also to your point, I think about sharing real knowledge. I mean that that's another key thing. You're you're not what you do your own business and that it may come up in the conversation but that shouldn't be the thrust of the conversation the thrust of the conversation should be the the value you're creating so when you work with them uh with your guests like getting your guests onto podcasts and how do you advise them sort of in terms of of being able to to uh to bring value to it and bring value to the audience I mean, we definitely explain to them about, you know, that part, the sharing the knowledge, yeah. that's the most important part. And it's not a sales pitch. You can talk yeah. about your business usually at the, the end of all, you know, mm-hmm. all the interviews, but it's, you definitely have to, you know, tell your story. It's just so important because like story sells and it doesn't mean that you have to just sell, sell, but it, just tell your own experience, yeah. share with them. It's more like the story, make the connection yeah. between you and, yeah. and, and, the, and the, the listeners. So that's. Mm-hmm. So, some some level uh, it, it's gonna connect uh, with the right people. Yeah, yeah, and then usually we we have them just come up with the idea because as you mentioned, someone just uh, want to try a broad thing, so like uh, mm-hmm. customer acquisition. So that's quite bored, well, like general thing, but you have to break mm-hmm. it down. So it's like let's 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 think about break it down. It's like I would say. Uh, you write a blog post or something so you have a title and then different sections uh, you can talk about um, obviously if you have a knowledge that's that's really helpful and then mm-hmm. we come up with 
some talking points. So you can break it down even further. And obviously you can try some different ones and then you will see which one, <coughs> sorry, which one uh, get better or you can get better over time or you will better. Mm -hmm. That's, that's, you will better with your, mm -hmm. uh, with your talking it with your, with your topics over time and see how, how does it resonate with the host. So that's another mm -hmm. important thing. And then um, some of the people, just uh, some examples, you have to name names or anything, but um, some of the people you've worked with, have, have any of them like been, been like surprised about how, how well it's worked and how they've really taken to it? You know, maybe people who are a little bit nervous starting or not one, not sure whether they really wanted to get into being a podcast guest. Um, do you have any examples of people who were kind of nervous, kind of tentative, but it's really worked out fantastic for them? Yeah, I think yeah. one of our clients, we, we are with her for like for a couple of years now, and she's uh, a keynote speaker. She was very well known in the industry before, but she was so nervous uh, at her first on her first interview that basically she was freaking out and she just messaged me on LinkedIn. It's like, OK, I can do this. You know, this is just so, you know. Um, uh, I don't know. I'm just like that kind of stressed out. <laughs> she was really stressed out about it, um, and she was a keynote speaker. Mm -hmm. But doing podcast is a bit different media. It's a d different medium that you use because obviously sometimes you have podcast interviews where you can you have only the audio, not the video part. Yeah. So it's harder because you only use your voice to express yourself, mm -hmm. not your face, and the body language is missing from there. So for her as a keynote speaker, it was important to talk and use her body as, a, as you know like the body language as well but mm -hmm. you know for the first interviews they only use audio so it was really frustrating for her but now she's flying and she she did a lot of interviews and she's brilliant what she does and yeah mm -hmm. you just have to get used to it and you need practice and obviously your first interview won't be you know the century's best interview in the world but with practice and with you know persistency and consistency in podcast guesting you will reach there and you can get on brilliant podcasts and i i think what what's happened there and then with a few of our clients and then some of those like okay I'm, i can't do this because the hosts have the similar or same knowledge or same expertise what they have um and then they are uh, like overthinking. So it's like, okay, it's going to be like oh, uh, really hard. It's, uh, she will be coming hard on me. So it's like testing my knowledge and everything. But it's not about that, really. So mm -hmm. I usually tell them it's, it's not about the host like coming to you really hard. If you really know, it's like how deep is your knowledge. There so, are a couple of podcasts, though, that they do yeah, that, but I heard not the actually, ones but, that we were yeah. <laughs> But most of yeah. the time, it's not not happening. So it's, it's, it's like a friendly conversation. Exactly. Yeah. So it's not mm -hmm. not testing. Yeah. No, I I would agree. I mean, I know there are a couple of podcasts. I think where you have hosts who who like to do that. Um, it's not really. Uh, yeah. It's not what I like personally either to <laughs> listen to either. Um. But I mean, but to your point, I think for and for any of your you know future potential uh, customers as well is it's just to understand is the host wants you to succeed, wants you to be good, wants to just have a really good conversation, wants to come across. I like them to come across like it's just a, it's a casual conversation between friends who've never met each other before. You know, it's just a, <laughs> and it's all because I think the more friendly, the more, you know, conversational is, the more likely the the real nuggets of knowledge are, are to come out. So I think it's important for people who are thinking about being guests to understand like the host is on your side. Yeah. yeah, it's a teamwork. It's yeah, a teamwork. Exactly. We are not against each other. We, we are we, we are together in this. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it's also interesting, as you said, I mean, it's interesting sometimes how people like can be keynote speakers or whatever, and then like they get in front of like they're suddenly in a podcast and just two people staring at each other through cameras <laughs> and it can be it can be a little bit it can be a little bit unnerving um, for people. But again, like I said, I mean, at the end of the day, we all want it to be successful. Absolutely. And we are all people and human and we just be having a conversation. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, just um, one, one quick last question. Where do you see podcasting going? I mean, is this something you just see continuing to grow, get more? Um, is there, is there any developments you see on the horizon that we should be aware of? What we noticed that like during when, you know, COVID started, 
sure. it was i think it was blooming so it was yeah it was every everyone started <laughs> a podcast and those podcasts uh, by time stopped and you can see that those you know we can we can see that some people stopped podcasting in in march april right. uh, 21 22 so a lot of them started but a lot of them dropped and stopped uh, but i think for the future i mean there is a like big future in that because a lot of people like two and 2.5 million podcasts in the world right now approximately uh, yeah. and i think it still has a bright future and it was still yeah, blue I think, I think it's it's growing but not that pace what we had with like 2020 2021 so everyone started a podcast and then instead of live events uh, like our clients yeah. like okay so let's go on a podcast or start a podcast and then what we see on the other end uh, some podcasts was like okay we started working with and that now it's like okay we can't take guests until january so it's like some of them just filling up the spots very quickly mm-hmm. so it's I, I feel it's it's getting popular and those like keep going uh they have listeners so that's that's a good one and they don't stop like after seven episodes or even one i saw it like mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. after one but yeah it's uh, i think it's growing but not that crazy pace yeah before. yeah no i would agree with you i think uh, yeah as you said i mean i think everybody uh, started a podcast during covid <laughs> um <laughs> and then obviously discovered that uh Maybe they had more time to do it then, and then they discover that it's uh, time consuming or harder or whatever. And so I think it's good. Yeah, I think it's shaken out uh, a lot. Um, so um, before we go, like all your information will be below this video, but before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and your business. So we are Podcast Connection, we're based in Europe, and we help entrepreneurs to connect podcast shows and organize their interviews. We, it's a done for you service, we do everything for our client. They just have to show up on the day of the interview and do what they can and share their knowledge. And yeah, <laughs> that's what we do in a nutshell. <laughs> yeah, excellent. Listen, thank you. And and as I said, um, I'm very, uh, Noemi and Gabor have been very grateful, have sent me a lot of fantastic guests. Um, so I would highly recommend uh, that you check them out if you're looking for guests or if you are looking to be a guest yourself, go, go check it out. It's much better to go through somebody like this and try and do it on your own that'd be my little bit of advice for everyone so thank you for watching and listening thank you both for all your insights and i'll see you all again soon all right thanks you thanks thank you for having, having us. us john